Good afternoon and welcome to the Poplar Forest Video Gazette episode 2. My name is Rachel Hauntel, I'm the Program and Education Coordinator here at Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest and I'd like to take a little time to speak to you today about Thomas Jefferson and his love of music. Music figured prominently in Jefferson's life. In 1778 he wrote to a young Italian friend that music was the favorite passion of his soul. Uh, in fact, music allowed him entrance into Virginia society, helped him win his wife, and in his later years consoled him in her death and um, as he grew older. Now, in fact, Jefferson is proof that musical education encourages academic achievement and helps great minds get to work. Uh, in fact, he began his love affair with music as a young man studying the violin. Uh, later in Williamsburg, when he was a student of George Wythe, uh, a lawyer there, he actually uh, got a young uh, Italian immigrant, Francis Alberti, to give him lessons in the violin. And that, on top of Mr. Wythe's curriculum, which St. George Tucker described as rigorous and started before breakfast and ended only with the great man's retirement in the evening means that Jefferson was truly dedicated to this. He said that he owes his proficiency to four hours of practice a day on the violin. Now that is a lot of extra work when you were a young college student. Now, of course, it also allowed him greater entrance into Virginia society. While he was a student of Mr. Wythe, he was actually introduced to the royal governor of Virginia at the time, Francis Fauquier. Um, Francis Fauquier used to have these sort of little salons weekly with one of the mathematics professors at William & Mary, Dr. William Small, and George Wythe was often invited, and when he found out Mr. Jefferson played the violin so well, Francis Fauquier actually invited him to come to these little meetings as well. He was an avid musician, so they had what Jefferson later called in his life a party of four, and he enjoyed these conversations so much it was able to allow him to sort of get out of his shell. Because if we look at Jefferson as a young man, he was about six Six foot two, he was a little long of limb and he might have felt a little awkward about that as we all do in our teenage years. And so allowing these conversations and, and having music as a conduit, he was able to become more comfortable with his peers in Virginia society, which helped him in his political career in Virginia. He was later elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. Uh, family rumor also has it that music helped him woo his wife, young Martha Scales. Martha, Martha Wales Skelton, <laughs> pardon me there, bit of a tongue twister her name. <laughs> and uh, in fact, uh, he bought her a piano forte during their engagement. She was a young wealthy widow and she had plenty of suitors, but it was her love of music that drew her to young Thomas Jefferson. Uh, once the couple was married uh, over the Christmas season, they actually continued to collect music of all kinds. Their sheet music collection ranged from drinking songs to Handel, so they were clearly a very musical family. Uh, they encouraged their two daughters to play a number of instruments, and their household included a violin, a viola, a harpsichord, and a pianoforte. Uh, Mr. Jefferson was always reminding his young daughters, Mariah and Martha, not to neglect their music. Now, unfortunately, his wife did pass away quite young, and it seemed that music was one of Jefferson's only consolations during this time. I mean, who among us hasn't picked up a favorite piece of music or listened to their favorite song when they're feeling down? And certainly, he continued to practice his violin even when he was in France serving as the ambassador. Uh, at that time, he very critically injured his wrist, and it Records show that he continued to buy uh, violin strings as well as bows and rosin into the 1790s, indicating that not even a debilitating illness or an injury would keep him from his love of music. During his presidency, he even advocated for musical education for our young people, calling music invaluable, particularly for a young ladies' education. You know what they say in Virginia, if you can't sing, dance, or play an instrument, you have no social life. You're never going to make any friends or get married. So certainly critical in that respect. Now, I'd like to end this little talk with a, a question. Just how important was music to Thomas Jefferson? It was certainly important enough that he dedicated hours, countless thousands of hours, to its study and composition in his lifetime. It was important enough that he stressed his children and his grandchildren to study the instrument, and even financial difficulties in his later part of his life didn't keep him from encouraging this. He once bought a guitar for his young granddaughter Virginia Randolph Trist that she said was so expensive that she had never dreamed of owning anything like it, but he went out of his way to make sure that she got it. In fact, he once held a raffle to raise money to buy one of his other granddaughters a piano. He held a raffle in the Virginia Gazette where he asked people to, to buy tickets so that he could make money to buy his granddaughter a piano. <laughs> 
that is really some true dedication to their education and to music itself. So thank you for listening to my little talk today. I hope you learned something more about Mr. Jefferson and music, and I hope you're inspired to go listen to your favorite song today. <laughs>